Yo, 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 I got my man, Michael Walker, who's still in Florida, hanging out, <laughs> interviewing him, because me and him are doing a master class together next week that he's going to be leading, which is going to be the five steps of building a profitable funnel for your music and different offers you can put together, basically how you can make more money with your music. Michael, how you doing, brother, brother? Hey, man. Yeah! Um, brother sorry. from another mother. <laughs> I I had to do the uh, the yak yeah, cam. It's, it's literally I had this installed, and the only thing that I use it for is just yeah. Um, but it's, but it's, side, it's fun. The side shot. Um, amazing. Yeah, dude. I just got the the piano was out of commission for a while, and I just got to plug back in. And it kind of reminded me, like, man, like this is really cool. Like being able to just jam out, like when I'm doing like meetings and stuff. Um, our NFT developer, like we hung out for like two hours, and we were just geeking out about stuff and noodling on the piano. I was like, yeah, it's nice to have have. Uh, this you know in the workstation that's dope dude i got my acoustic guitar in the uh, in my closet i was taking lessons and then i stopped and uh you know i just let the pros write the beats and make 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 the music and i'm just gonna stick to song you know what i was thinking yeah. i was just thinking like, as soon as you said that i'm like if it's about to happen we're about to write a song right here live on the internet <laughs> here can, it comes man. let's just go the let's go the collaboration Oh Boom. my gosh. You know, what's <laughs> funny, man, when teaching my students, like I've been doing a little bit more song critiques on like kind of my more one-on-one -on -one students and it's needed. It's really important. I know you focus a lot on the marketing, but like really the best marketing any student can have is a good song. Um, mm. Right. Like I know you say they need a music video, but underneath that, it needs to be a good song. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah, this in um, the masterclass that we do, that's like kind of like step one. We talk about the content iceberg and how um, if you want to be able to kind of like cut through the cut through the noise, there, there's so much, you know, there's, there's so much music and also there's just like so much talented, talented, uh, talented artists out there right now right. making music. And um, it definitely is important to have a high quality product that like kind of cuts cuts through the noise, sets you apart. Um, of, of course, you know, I, I and I think that you, you and I probably think the same way about this, that like the music's important, but also if you don't know how to like promote it or get it in front of the right people and actually build a relationship with them, then it's, it sort of just like sits there and doesn't really do yeah. anything. So, so it's kind of that you need both, right? Like you need the high quality, you need music, but then, but then also you need to be able to, to get it out and get it in front of the right people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a real, like I've gotten, I've been good at marketing, but one of the things, even as an artist myself, I'm realizing what's important too is that community. And like, mm -hmm. there's artists that, are you know more like that are more talented than, than you and I but they'll never see the light of day because they won't market they won't build that community and they just recluse right but you just can't do that anymore um mm -hmm. and uh that's why like you know I want to chat with you about what you've been helping and we're going to be I want to kind of talk about what you're going to a little bit what you're going to be teaching on this um training but like the idea of being aggressively marketing your music like one of those things is what you say is have a have a video ad um and then we're like promoting their song or music video but what what are they saying in the ad what is it that you're you're are you telling them to give away their music for free like what's the the first thing you're telling artists um to to promote like what's the the, the messaging behind it yeah that's that's a great question um and, and i think what you said about the real like focus point um is really about building community and like building mm. connection and like and having real conversations with fans yeah i think it's something that's more true now um than ever and you know especially nowadays like you, you have this ability to, to personally connect with with fans in a way that you know once you when you're huge and you're massive then you're not able to have a personal connection with every single fan but when you're just starting out if you don't have you know 10,000 fans or, or like you know, a lot of fans yet it gives you this opportunity to actually show up for them and connect with them and that's yeah. the thing that you can provide more value than even you know some of these artists mm. that are more established than you but um in terms of the actual kind of like the the system and and of course you know we're, we're going to geek out on this and, and dive into it in the master class i'm super excited for that but um, in a nutshell, what we found um, we're working best for the artists that, that we're working with right now is these, we call them virtual tour hacking campaigns, mm -hmm. but um, the, type, the type of campaign is a, a messenger campaign. So it's like Instagram and Facebook. And it's basically, we, we call it virtual tour hacking because it's, um, 
the idea came from something that that we did with my band Paradise Fears when we were first starting, which was um, you know what we call tour hacking now. And the idea was we actually walked up to fans who were waiting in lines for shows, and we followed tours around for like six months um, straight, just walking up and meeting these fans in lines for shows and connecting with them. <laughs> and so we would introduce ourselves. We had some clips with some um, you know, some headphones, these like Sony ten dollar headphones that we like broke apart so two people could listen at once. And we just walked up to, to everyone and just had a conversation and asked if they wanted to hear some, some of our music and connected with them. And if they liked it, then, you know, we had a backpack full of CDs and, and we would offer a CD. And we sold 24,000 CDs doing that in wow. about six months. Wow. And when I look back on, on my life, you know, and in, in, in our career, you know, independently, um, we toured for about 10 years and we released an album that hit number two on iTunes as an alternative rock album. And when I started my family about five years ago, um, that's when I was kind of transitioning from wanting to tour full time and be, be on the road to like staying at home. And that's, that's when I started Modern Musician. And when I first started coaching, and I was kind of reflecting um, on, okay, what moved the needle in my own life? What like moved the needle in our own career? What could I teach um, mm -hmm. other artists? One of the first things that came up was this idea of tour hacking. Where I was like, you know, yeah. me personally, this is what took me from a super shy, awkward kid to kind of facing my fear of rejection and like learning how to connect with, with people and just through right. sheer like repetition, repetition of yeah. meeting these people who those people in lines for shows are like the best kinds of people to connect with because they actually got off their butts and they went out to a show they're, and they spent money. They're ticket buyers. They're there. ticket buyers. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're customers. Like that's, that's a good point. Like that's the hottest, warmest. Like that's the, the that's the exact. As long as you get the genre right, that's the exact yeah. type of person you want to be in front of. A hundred percent. You know, and and it was just really I don't know life affirming or or validating. I think for us because we at the before we did that we didn't really have a, much of an audience and we were just starting out and, right. uh, and and in retrospect too like our music was pretty early on it wasn't like you know amazing yeah. but just what we found is just like through connecting with those people personally like one on one we built this really strong relationship and yeah and I think that that's really what propelled us forward um, to go from you know scratch living in our van to selling 24,000 CDs in about six months. It was like that one idea of tour hacking. And so when I first started coaching um, and, and we started Modern Musician, the first thing I thought was, you know, tour hacking. I wonder, does this still work? Do people still buy CDs and lines for shows? Don't listen to CDs anymore, right? Um, and so I started I started coaching um, some other artists on, on how to do it. And one of the first bands I started coaching, there's two guys in the band. They went out and they went tour hacking and they made $11,000 in a single month. Oh doing That's it crazy. and so i thought awesome cool like you know everyone should go tour hacking and I, I created a three three day workshop i called it the tour hacking workshop and at this point um close to forty thousand musicians have gone through that free three-day workshop for the, the tour hacking workshop and i basically just taught like here's how you go do this successfully and uh, what i found was that like 99 percent of people who went through that workshop um they loved the story of tour hacking and they could see how it, how it would work but very, very few people were actually willing or had like, you know, the guts to go, go out. Yeah, and it do takes this. a lot of courage, dude, to do that, to walk up to people. <laughs> it is strange. It's so weird how terrifying that, that experience was, you know, it almost seems like, I don't know, like we, it shouldn't be that scary, but I remember walking you got up your to your boys with you. If you got your boys with you and your crew, that's a little different. And you know, you're just like on a mission together and I'm sure it got right. easier with each person and then you get into mm -hmm. your flow and then you just don't even care, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. And I th I'm pretty sure when we first started, yeah, we had groups of two and we would kind of do it together. And then we realized we could, you know, we could talk to more people if we like split up. So eventually we were kind of doing it one, one by one. But, um, oh, wow. you know, there, there's something primal in us. Like when you're, when you're walking up to a stranger in line for a show, there's a deep sense of fear that comes up And the fear is basically saying like, if you do this, you will die. Like, if you walk up to this person, they're like, you're going to die. Don't do yeah. this. It's a horrible yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, apparently, I, I don't know where that comes from or why exactly, but I've heard that like evolutionary psychology says that we like, grew up in tribes, and if we got rejected by the wrong person, we might actually get ostracized, then we actually would die. And that's yeah. why we have this insane fear of rejection, even right. though nowadays it's like you're not going to die if someone doesn't yeah. like you or like you, yeah. you get rejected. Just in your head, right? Um, yeah. So, so anyways, long story short, so tour hacking, you know, 
um, we knew that that worked incredibly well, but like 99% of people said, is, is there any way that like, that we can do something that's more accessible, like that I don't have to leave my family or my day job and I can mm. you know, do this from home. And that's kind of when we started searching for like, is there a way to kind of do something similar on, on the internet? And mm -hmm. this is right around the time that I started um, you know, I had uh, my own mentors who were kind of teaching me about digital marketing and I started experimenting with, um, this, uh, Facebook and Instagram ads. And there's one campaign that we found that was just working really, really well for, um, for ourselves and for the, the artists that we had tested it with. And it was these messenger campaigns. And eventually we, we started calling them virtual tour hacking campaigns because it was kind of the same fundamental root of tour hacking. Because when I think about like, why did tour hacking work is mm -hmm. because one, we were targeting the right fans, right? So there's the people who actually go out to shows, they're there for the band, they're for the artist, you know, they're like the right people to, to connect yeah. with. And then two was, you know, we would introduce ourselves to them and we would look to have a conversation to like build a relationship with them. And it wasn't just a one way you know, sort of street, but it was really about having this two-way conversation. And that was what mm -hmm. made those, the ability to connect with them is we would like ask them questions, we'd get to know right. them. And so the virtual twerking campaign is done through Messenger. So in Instagram or Facebook, when someone clicks on the ad, um, and the ad is also very similar to what we would say when we walked up to people in lines. So it's conversational. That, it wasn't like, it wasn't like buy my stuff, more something a little bit more what you would say to a friend. It, exactly. You know, what I would say when I walk to people in line is I would say, hey, like, do you guys mind if I talk to you for a few minutes while you're waiting in line? And at first I would actually ask them, like, are you guys here for the all-time low show? And, like, of course, they're, like, wearing an all-time low shirt. They're standing in front of a line. Like, it's like, of course, yeah. they're there for it. But yeah, yeah. that was a great kind of opening line. So they would know yeah, that yeah. it's an easy one. And they know how to, like, there for, like, the all-time low to talk about that. And then – um so I'd say, awesome. So, you know, my name is Michael. Um, I play keyboard in a band called Paradise Fears. And basically, we're huge fans of all-time low. And someday, we actually want to go on tour with them. And we noticed that before their shows, you have thousands of people who are waiting outside to go into the go into the show, sometimes for, like, the entire day in advance. So we thought uh, one of the smartest things we could do would just be to um, introduce ourselves and connect with you and share some, some of our music. So if you're interested, you know, I have a pair of headphones here with some clips of our songs. But I should probably warn you that most people who listen to it enjoy it so much that they start to cry and faint. And so, you know, I've got a, a backpack full of tissues. I have really fast reflexes. So if you, like, you know, fall, make sure you don't hit your head on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, th that was like my, my little bit. Your like line, I would say your that, little bit line, yeah. That, that was my go-to icebreaker. <laughs> like it would work yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah. And, um, and then they would listen to the song and, and I'd ask them questions about themselves. Like how long have you been listening to all time low for what's your favorite song? And I would just kind of get to know who they are. Um, and I would try to come up with some sort of, you know, inside joke, to, like just with them. Like if someone's wearing a purple hat and be like, you're the purple hat girl, you know, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. silly stuff like that. And, um, and then if they enjoyed it, I would say something like, like, so what do you guys think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Like, yeah, this is awesome. Where can I, where can I listen to more? Um, well, if you guys liked it, um, I do have a backpack full of CDs, and you know this is called Yours Truly, and I would like hand them out so they could hold them in their hands. That was a really yeah. important part of it. Um, you know, it was produced by the same guys who produced All Time Low and Made a Parade. So if you're a fan of them, then I think you might like like the, the album too. And you know, to be honest, the the reason I'm out here um, isn't because I'm trying to sell uh, a ton of CDs, as many CDs as possible. It's, it's really because we want to go on tour with All Time Low, and we want to reach as many people as possible. And so, mm. um, so if you'd like to support us, you know, the getting a CD goes towards us, you know, being able to you know pay for new music and be able to go on go on tour. But at the same time, the most important thing for me is just like you having the music and enjoying yeah. it and building a relationship. So I'm happy to give you a CD for free too if um, you don't have $10 on you. Oh, wow. You offered it to him for free as well. Did people – What? so tell me what happened there. I'm curious. Yeah. So um, out of probably like five out – of, out of five groups that I would make that offer to – there might be like, and there would be different sizes of groups. There might be like one or like usually we would try to approach a group with like four or five people. Um, I would say out of four out of five groups we talked to, there would at least be one or two people who would get the CD at full price. Yeah. And in some cases, yeah, I remember getting like hundred dollar bills from some people. Like they overpay, like they tip you, just want to support you. Yeah, dude. I've yeah. Had, it's crazy how generous people are. Like mm -hmm. 
I, I, I like be like, wow, like they here, keep it. It's a tip, you know, like mm-hmm. people are so 100%. generous. And so in terms of like how many CDs we got for free versus like how many did we sell? Um, I would say that it almost evened out in terms of the ones that we gave out for free turns ones that mm-hmm. we sold for full price. Although I will say we did some like two for one promotion sometimes. If there's like a friend there, there's two of them and yeah, I wanted yeah, both yeah, them to have a CD, deal. but only one friend had the $10 bill. I'd be like, okay, you guys can both have, you have a CD. Or whatever. Yeah. And, and then, and then I would ask, you know, like, um, sometimes people like us to like sign these, um, you know, is that something that, that, that you'd be interested in? And be like, yeah, of course. And so now, like, we take out a Sharpie, we're signing the CD for them, then they ask for, like, a picture, so we're in a picture. Everyone else on the line is watching this whole thing go down, and they, and they, and they see, like, okay, the person's getting a CD, like, they're signing it, taking a picture. And um, so th- there really is sort of, like, a warm-up effect that happens. Like, by the time you're talking with people, they kind of know, um, okay, like, they're listening to music, and I'm wondering, are they, like, kind of famous? Like, why are they, like, getting, like, autographs? And, wow. Um, so you just go you down know, just, the line to the next people where some people be like, Hey, I want to listen now. Or some people are like, eh, I'm good. Or get, get a bit of both maybe. Yeah. You know, we did a pretty good job after you, we did it for a while. We got pretty good at, at kind of spotting like the right groups who are receptive. You know, if someone's kind yeah. of like, you know, and the ones to avoid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's gosh, surprisingly, I mean, there was a very, very few, uh, bad experiences that we had talking to anyone yeah. probably because we were good at just like choosing the right groups but also just because i think yeah. the people who actually went out to the shows were the right people for us to be connecting with because they're actually yeah. the supporters the people who and care dude, about that, that's that. what i really want to drive home for people like because I've, I've heard of bands doing this and going to like malls and stuff and you know I, I have never heard of people knocking on doors but like there's different audiences and obviously someone in their house versus somebody in a mall versus somebody at a concert like you are targeting the right people you know what i mean and 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 doing that and so like that is just such the right like you got to have a hungry buying audience right they got to be the right right people and stop trying to force your music to people who who don't want it put it with the people that are already got their their hands up so this works so well physically you've taken it digitally obviously you know i've done a lot of the free plus shipping and sold lots of cds i i I know it it works but i want to hear like so like like what's so powerful about this too is like yeah not everybody wants to go like i don't know if i even have the guts to go physically that's why i did it online but like another thing i want to point out is that like the like instead of like you're 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 trapped to whether the band even comes to your town or city like heck i live in canada so not even nearly as many shows um and even if i lived in a small town like south dakota how many bands come up there like you got to be in a touring town might be the objection so this is why like you've taken it online but also you're not limited to just this demographic now all of a sudden all of america the world is like your oyster now right Mm. 100%. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the biggest opportunities, or one of the reasons that we we do focus on you know the virtual tour hacking for ninety nine percent of people now is is because of both the fact that it's just a lot easier for people to do rather than like going out and walking up to these strangers in lines for shows and having to travel. Yeah, you know, we like we didn't live a very glorious lifestyle when we were doing this. We like they slept in our cars, slept in Walmart parking lots. And we like, you know, our cars would break down sometimes. It was just, it was an adventure, but like, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't want to do that again. And, um, and also it's, it's much more scalable. Like there's, when yeah. you're talking to these people online, there's one of you and you can only talk to so many people, you know, each, yeah. each day. Whereas with the, the messenger system, you can actually build an automated flow that has conversations with thousands of people a day. You know, and we have yeah. artists that we worked with that are like in their 70s and, and 80s even who are running these campaigns are getting thousands of messages per day. And I'm just trying to imagine if they were like, I don't know, walking up to people in lines for shows or like, or even if they were trying to personally respond to every message that came in, yeah. they just like wouldn't physically be able to do it. So I think oh, there are right. some really cool, you know, opportunities because of, you know, the, the state of technology and because of like the yeah. internet and messenger, you know, flows. That I want to reiterate, like, that's what a music video does. You're literally taking your best performance, your best song, your best take, and you're multiplying that. You're cloning yourself all over the internet. And instead of walking up one to one, which I have done before at clubs and bars, never want to do it again, um, and you're going one to many. 
or mm-hmm. instead of one to one, you're going one to a million, I guess, depending on your budget. Like, you know, like I know I'm running ads right now for my music and while we're talking to this and it's like, it's that freedom is what you're trying to show artists as well too. Right. Like, mm. like hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, there is, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's, there's always that, that, uh, balance, right. Because, um, there's like a, a balance between being connected and having like building like real relationships with, with the fans. And then there's also the balance of like scaling and automating it and being able to, mm. to, to reach a wider, wider audience. And there's kind of that, um, you know, finding that, especially early on, I think, you know, the, if, if I was advising like a, an artist who was in our shoes, who was maybe, a younger, a younger band in like their twenties, early twenties or something. And they were like, look, what's the best way for us to grow as quickly as possible. And we're willing to like get our hands dirty and just show up and like, and work our butts off. Then I'd be like, Oh, hands down, like go tour hacking, go do this. This is going to be the fastest and the best way for you to get in touch with the right fans and actually get real validation for your Mm. music. Because that, I think that was a big piece of it for us too, is just that before we had, because the point that you made about, gosh, like the audience, the people that you're connecting with, if they're at the mall or if they're like at their house versus the people at the concert being the right people. Um, it was really the first time I think that we had that kind of reception to our music because oh, cool. we had always just shared our music with our friends and our family and with mm-hmm. people like mm-hmm. locally. And, and they sometimes like had to kind of just support it because they were, you know, our friends and family, but they weren't really the people who were truly going to resonate with it and be like super fans yeah. and people who actually care. Music. Yeah, exactly. And when, so when we met these people in lines for shows, um, even though our music wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the most produced, like best music it was pretty rough back then. They were so receptive and they were so encouraging. And, and so that validation really um, meant a lot to us back then. And I think the same thing kind of applies with these messenger campaigns for a lot of artists, especially if they're earlier on and they haven't you know, kind of had success in the way that, that, that you've had manifest where, but I know you've gone through, because everyone that's, you know, been able to achieve success has had to kind of go through that stage at the beginning where you didn't oh actually God. have that validation. You didn't have the audience big time. yet. Big time. And so I think that, that there is a big piece of, of this strategy that even before like, um, they like create an automated flow and start to scale it mm-hmm. up. Like I always recommend that you keep it, um, organic at the beginning to actually have these conversations and actually share your music and go back and forth. And that way you can actually like really connect and and see that these are real human beings that actually are getting a ton of value from your music. And in that way, when you start to scale it up, it's like you're, you only start to do that because you're a human being and you can't physically, you know, connect with every single person personally, but you can still, then it's just like you start creating a little bit more like gates. You just have like different tiers of access that you can start to build out as you grow and, and you need to build in those tiers of access for you to be able to contib- contribute at, at your highest level. Yeah. And that's what I always want to point out there. Like when you're saying the word scale, it's like you're, cause you can't scale yourself. You know, you can't scale your time with just you. That's why you need these systems. You need these at Facebook, Instagram ads, these pre-written bot messages that you can also, I guess, you know, you can respond to or have a VA hire that out to message them. But I also want to point out too, and uh, guys, I'm going to put the link to this class. And this class is normally 47, but you, if you attend live, it's free. I'm going to put the the link below this. But um, what's so cool about online, and, and we could talk forever about this, is that like you started to know who to talk to in line, right? Like you you gauge that out. Well, what's so amazing about Facebook and Instagram ads and even TikTok ads, the pixel and the algorithm, the AI is so smart that on your ads, it starts to know who to show your ads to, but more importantly, who not to. So it's Mm -hmm. only showing your ads. It's like the ad is virtually walking up only to the right people, which is mind blowing (laughs) how powerful that is. Right. And I'm sure you get into that on the, on the training and stuff too. Mm. A hundred percent. That's such an important point because that, that was one thing that, that, that we learned through, um, through trial and error and through, through experience was that, um, you know, when you launch these virtual tour hacking campaigns, you have to set up the pixel and you have to set up the, the Facebook conversions API tracking to let Facebook and Instagram know who are the right people. Because yes. if you don't do that, 
then they have to sort of like, you know, guess and you don't always reach the people who actually go out to shows and the people who actually care. And a lot of times it's actually going to give you the cheapest traffic possible, which mm -hmm. might actually be um, not the right people who actually are engaged fans who actually care. So yeah. um, exactly like you said, you know, being able to set up the pixel and the conversions tracking in the right way to let them know who are the right people. Yeah. Now, um, this, it's, you know, it's kind of like what we did just as, as you know, in our human brains, naturally, it's like through, through experience, through meeting all these people online for shows, we started to get um, verification. Like when we walked up to certain groups, you know, <clears throat> you know like there's like a, usually a mom in the group has like a purse, like, say, like on her side with her, yeah. with like, you know, five, five kids. You know, back then that was like, you know, we'd walk up to every group like that because it was like, mom, we get the CD. It's like, bye, yeah, you bye. can all get a CD. Um, you know, awesome. subtle, subtle things like that. Um, Facebook but, knows who the moms are online with the first, the virtual moms. <laughs> the virtual <It> moms. <laughs> That's it. We're renaming the strategy. The virtual, the virtual mom strategy. Um, <laughs> Find your virtual but, mom. Soccer moms. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. New, the, I, I sense a new business venture here. Find, yeah. find your virtual moms. Man. <laughs> Um, but exactly, exactly what you're saying, like the, having the, the, really the power of the full, um, Instagram and Facebook algorithm that have billions of users that mm. they're, you know, that they understand a lot about yes. those users and how they behave is incredibly Scary powerful. How much, how much they know. It is. It, yeah. Use, it's, use it as your advantage. Don't get bitter. Mm. Get, take advantage of, of these things. Um, yeah. One more thing I want to just touch on, and then guys, make sure you click the link below again, show up live so you don't have to pay or you can pay. It's up to you, really. Um, but this event is going to be crazy. He's going to go in so much more depth than what we talk about. But like for those that don't have CDs, right, because not everyone's pressing CDs. I'm still pressing CDs. I've pressed less. If I was touring, I'd press more. But people are still buying these, first of all. But for those that don't, let's talk about what you can offer what's working, maybe some upsells and stuff like that so that, you know, you can be, be profitable. And what, what, what should people sell that don't mm. maybe even have physical? hundred percent. Yeah. I'm, ex I'm excited to, to dig into it and we'll, we'll definitely geek out on the full masterclass and, and we'll actually like during the masterclass, we just go step-by-step. Step. We actually launch one of these campaigns using Instagram and Facebook ads. Um, so you can basically follow along and you can either, if you have the $47 version, then you can, you know, watch the replay and kind of go with it. Or if you're there live, we, we were doing it for free for Chris just because he's a buddy and, um, and it's something that sometimes we'll do like swaps where we'll do training for your audience, you training for audience. Cause we, support each other and we help out each other's audiences like that um so if you want to get it for free then you can attend it live and if you actually are there live um at the end of the master class we give out all the resources and you got the replays and everything as well so you can essentially oh, that's how we can make it accessible if, if that's valuable and part of it is we'll walk through the four the four different types of offers that we recommend making with really good examples of the four different levels and cool. the thing that is really interesting um, that we found that is working best right now for um, for the the artists that, that we're working with is the higher ticket offers like the things mm -hmm. that go for like a thousand or three thousand or even five thousand dollars for a single a single offer and wow. um, and so we'll definitely we'll geek out we'll kind of go into detail on on all of the the different yeah. types of things that you can you can create. So you're talking about like a uh, a cold fan. And then warming them up, getting them to know you, like and trust you, build the relationship. They check your music, and then offering a thousand, three thousand, or five thousand dollar bundle. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but you know we have we have artists now. It's probably the fastest way that we've seen artists go from scratch to making a serious income with, with their music, with like like two or three hundred people in their audience that came in from their ads, and they're making like two or three sales of these high ticket offers for you know as much as five thousand dollars for a single. Um, offer to a new fan and, and especially you if you're running why, paid traffic yeah you want to know why uh for you guys that are listening or watching this do you want to know why you haven't sold a 500 hundred dollar bundle you want to know why because you don't have one do you want to know why you haven't sold a thousand dollar one because you haven't created one mm. same with the three thousand and a five thousand dollar um and that's something that i share and so what do you want to do you want to go to this master class and learn and get inspired and create one. And even if you have one, are you offering it? Because fans can't take an offer you don't make. 
Um, that's like, right. Like you, and, and that's probably one of the mindset things that you're probably have to break and you'll probably break on the thing. And when you work with them is getting this starving, I'm broke. Doesn't mean all your fans are broke. Right. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. And in, we, we break down like the spreadsheet and like different targets and like milestones you should aim for. And, and the majority, like, like the target, for for the free plus shipping offer that um, that that we recommend making, it's like one in ten um, email subscribers who join your list. You're basically saying, "Hey, um, thanks for joining. Yeah, you know, I've got this free um, this free bundle for you. Normally it costs twenty dollars, but you can get it for free if you, I'll just ask you cover the shipping and handling." And your goal is like one in ten people who <laughs> say yes mm-hmm. to that, mm-hmm. and um, and so you really don't need to like. The more that you can, like, if you only offer to like three people and you're like, oh crap, well, I guess, you know, no one said yes, so I'm, I'm done. Didn't work. Yeah. Then, you know, it just, that's not how it works, right? And you'll hear this over and over and over again that it's just a numbers game. And, and yeah. it's okay. It's so much better to make an offer and for someone to say no thanks than just to not make the offer at all. Like, yeah. you're so infinitely better off. Uh, making an offer because for the one in 10 people or the one in a hundred or the one at 500, if you're talking about like a higher, higher end offer for those people, um, the ones who say yes, like you're doing a disservice to them and to yourself. If you don't, if you don't extend that as, as an offer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll, def- we'll, we'll geek out about it. I'll walk through right. and, and I think it'll help a lot to see, to see the things that are working right now and just how they're positioned just in terms of like understanding the possible like the the possibilities for what you could do and the the value that you actually could offer yeah um, hopefully hopefully you'll find it really valuable <clears throat> bring your notepads guys take notes come hang out i'm excited for this because i want to make some better and bigger offers michael i appreciate you so much brother thank you so much for hanging out with us guys the link is below the video or in the podcast notes peace awesome yeah thanks for having me man i'm excited for it it's gonna be awesome